Research for me is um, a big part of every book that I write. Um, I don't Wikipedia stuff, because anybody could do that. I mean, if you want to go on Google and check out what a, a weapon can do or, or other piece of that that's just sort of a quick research, that's fine. But I try to go to all the places that I write about, so I'm physically there walking around, talking to people, observing things, taking notes, taking pictures, so I get a real feel for the atmosphere. Um, and I collect a lot of research notes along the way, hundreds of pages I may have to read, dozens of people I may have to talk to or interview. And, uh, but the most critical thing is when you take all that research, you have to really distill it down. And you can't, you have to leave almost all of it out of the novel. The last thing you want to do is write a flip book. And a flip book is where a writer is very proud of his, his or her research and they don't want to take the time to integrate it into the material. So they just find a place and they just jam all those pages of research in there. And the reader will be reading along. They hit all this research and they flip past all those pages to get back to the story. You never want to do that. If I hadn't become a writer, I think I would have been either one, one of two things, uh, a teacher um, or I would like to think a federal agent because um, I've dealt a lot with them over the years from all different types of agencies and branches and done some of the training that they've done and found that really interesting and, and both empowering and also you feel like you're cont contributing in a positive way to society. If I had to describe my uh, novels in three words, it would probably be um, a waterfall, an avalanche, and a hurricane. <laughs> because what I try to bring is really super compelling characters put into the worst possible situations, and I want to see if they can survive or not. I'll tell people, do not skim my work, because everything that I put into the book, there's a reason for it being there. So if you skim over, you're going to miss a lot. And it's pedal to the metal, you know, lots of stuff happening. I don't mean explosions of people dying, just interesting things are happening all the time on every page of one of my books. So it takes a lot of effort to make it, uh, to make it happen that way. I try to bring interest on every page. When you're creating a, a criminal mastermind or a villain, um, you do have to get into their mind. I've read a lot of books on serial killers, psychopathic people, narcissists. People think, you know, narcissists is sort of uh, innocuous because somebody who just thinks they're beautiful, but a narcissist is, the, the, the key thing about a narcissist is they can't feel empathy or sympathy for anybody else. So they can kill human beings with utterly no uh, type of uh, consequences psychologically to them because they don't see those people as human beings or worth anything. So snuffing out their life is not a big deal. Um, I started at reading books like that because that type of character, that type of mentality fascinated me. So I probably read every serial killer, not just fiction book, but uh, biographical accounts of people like Ted Bundy or John Wayne Gacy or the Yorkshire Ripper and Jack the Ripper and to try to get into the mindset of what would drive people to do that. And it also allows me to put together sort of a, a good psychological profile background of that character because the last thing you want as a reader reading a book about a fascinating villain is, you know, what drove them to that? And at the end, the writer just says, well, you know, they were just crazy. That's not satisfying at all. There needs to be something more complicated than that because if you're having a person do horrific things to other human beings, you really need to build a solid case for why, why they're doing that. And one way to do that is to understand the people who committed those crimes, their psychological history, what happened to them, particularly when they were young, because most of them have sort of a very similar type of childhood going forward. And some of them also, their brains are developed differently than you and I. When I, you know, talking about missing a chromosome, I actually do mean that. The, if you look at an MRI imaging of a serial killer, you know, they have areas of the brain that are far more underdeveloped than normal people, and that's why sometimes they have no compassion and empathy for other people. Their brain does not receive that information, which is another reason why they do the terrible things that they do.